And now we need to look at integrals of the form du over u with trig. So let us begin. First, we have tangent x. You may look at that and think, well, wait a minute, how in the world can this be a du over u form since it's not even a fraction? Well, if you know the rule, there is a rule for the integral of tangent x. If you know that rule, um, then you may be thinking, why should I use du over u? I have that rule memorized. That's a fair question. But I want to show you how they actually came up with that rule in this problem. So we have to think, in order to do it that way, what does tangent of x equal? Well, if you recall, tangent of x is actually equal to sine of x over cosine of x. And if we change it to that form, then we could use u substitution. And it's almost always the right choice with u substitution to use the denominator as u. So u equals cosine, du equals negative sine of x. So we do have to multiply both sides by negative one to correct for the negative we don't have, or we don't need. So then when we substitute it, we get negative integral of du over u. And we know the integral of du over u is the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And that gives us the negative natural log of the absolute value of cosine x plus c. If you have memorized this rule for tangent, if you haven't already, you should, but as far as my course, uh, from now on, you certainly don't need to do all this work. You can just have that rule memorized. But I wanted to start there to show you how they got that rule. But as you'll see in this example that's coming up, there are times where you pretty much have to go that route of using u substitution. There's no specific rule people memorize for one in this form. But like I said before, when it comes to u substitution, the denominator is almost always the right choice for u, so I'll make u equal to tangent x. The derivative of that is secant squared x dx. Okay, now we do need a 3, so I'll multiply both sides by 3. So now we have a good match. It, we're essentially just pulling the 3 out front. You could think about it that way if it's easier. But I pull the 3 out front, and that gives me du over u. Once we're in the form du over u, we have to remember du over u, the rule for that is the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. So our final answer is 3 times the natural log of the absolute value of tangent x plus c. If you know your trig rules, this goes pretty quickly, it's pretty basic, but you've got to actually make sure you know them. Okay, cotangent of 2 theta. So this is an example where if you know the rule for cotangent, it's pretty quick, or you can do it like we did the first example with tangent, where you can rewrite it, because cotangent is the same as cosine over sine. Um, but I'm going to use the rule on this one, the rule for the integral of cotangent. So instead, what I'll use for u is 2 theta, and the derivative of that is 2 d theta. Divide both sides by 2. We have 1 half du equals d theta. So we substitute that, we'll have 1 half cotangent of u du. And the rule for the integral of cotangent u is the natural log of the absolute value of sine of u plus c. 1 half natural log absolute value of sine of 2 theta plus c. Now there's two reasons I put this in the lesson with du over u, or the natural log rule. One is the rule for cotangent, the antiderivative does have natural log. The other is you really could do this problem by rewriting this as cosine 2 theta over sine of 2 theta. 
Again, that's part of how they developed the rule for cotangent. And you would make u equal to the sine 2 theta, and then take the derivative and go from there. And once you work all that out, you would get the exact same result as we did here. But I would certainly recommend you have the trig rules memorized and do it the way I've done it in blue. One more example. 2 cosecant of x over 4 dx. This one I would definitely recommend you just use the trig rule. Now there is a way to rewrite this so you can get a du over u form, but frankly it's pretty painful, so I wouldn't recommend it. Tangent and uh, cotangent aren't too bad because they transition pretty easily into a fraction of sine over cosine or cosine over sine, but it takes a little more mathematical creativity to make that work with cosecant and secant. So instead we'll just be glad we know the rules. So we'll have u equals x over 4, or if it's easier to think about, you can write it as 1 fourth x. The derivative of that is 1 fourth dx. And we need to change that 1 fourth to a 2, so it matches what I have over here. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 8. And that gives me 8 integral of cosecant u du. And the rule for cosecant is the negative natural log of the absolute value of cosecant u plus cotangent u plus c. So our final answer, we will plug in x over 4 in for the u. And that does it. Make sure you know those rules for the trig and you should be ready to rock and roll when it comes to the integral of the form du over u.